Okay, so now that we've looked at joins, let's see what more we can do with joining and getting some interesting results. Look at query number 37. List the supplier number, name, and number of shipments for every supplier who has made at least one shipment. Okay, in other words, we want the supplier number name and every supplier could have made many shipments. We just want the count. Okay, supplier S1, Smith, three. Supplier S2, Jones, two, etc. Uh, those were just numbers I threw out. I don't know if those are the correct numbers, but that's what we are looking at. Okay, so clearly since we are counting, some kind of aggregate function is now playing a role. Okay, so this go back, we are going to add, uh, we are going to join the two table shipments and suppliers on the supplier number field. So by now we understand this pretty well. But now we see that S1 has made two shipments. S2 has made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven shipments. And S4 has made two shipments. Okay. So clearly, this is what we are trying to achieve. Count the number of shipments. And we know how to do this, right? We can be, we've used aggregate functions before. So we can say select supplier number, supplier name, because those are the things that we want. Supplier number, supplier name. Number of shipments. Because we're counting the number of rows. We just say count star. And we can give that count star a name, as we've seen before, as number of shipments. In other words, when it prints the output, it's not going to say count star as the column name. Instead, it will have number of shipments as our column name, which is slightly better. And then we have, after this, all the joining conditions from suppliers S, join shipments SP on SP.S number equals S.S number. By now, this is pretty clear. There's no problem. But of course, since we are using an aggregate and we want it to count by supplier number name combination, clearly we need to perform a group, right? So we say now group by supplier number, supplier name. That is for every unique combination of supplier number name, create a group and just count up the number of rows that form uh, the group, okay? Now again, notice here that we've got non-aggregates, we've got aggregate, and whenever you have that, you always need to group by all the non-aggregates. I had explained this in the last lecture. Uh, you should really try to make sure that you understand that. Otherwise, the query doesn't make sense. Now, MySQL may give you some results. It won't tell you that your query is actually wrong, but it will give you meaningless results. Okay, so you have to be careful about this. When, you, when you're mixing aggregates and non-aggregates in the select clause, then you always need to have a group by the non-aggregates, okay? And again, this makes sense uh, only when the, the combinations, then you've got many unique combinations of the non-aggregates that are possible. Okay, so the results are going to be S1, Smith, 2, S2, Jones, 7, S4, Clark, 2. For you to practice the same thing, list the part number, name, and number of shipments for every part that has only one shipment. It's very similar. So I would again encourage you to do this before going on. So stop the video, write your answer, proceed. Okay, select part number, part name, count star as number of shipments for the part to the join and then say group by part number, part name. Okay, so that's straightforward. It's just a small modification of the same thing that we had done for suppliers. Okay, let's combine some more of join queries with aggregates. So here we are saying list the supplier names and the corresponding total quantity and average shipment quantities. Okay, once again, the shipment table has for every supplier several shipments. And of course, let's say S1. S1 has made, I think, two shipments. Now let's take S2. S2 has made seven shipments. So we want the name of S2 and then we want the total quantity that S2 shipped and the average shipment quantity of the shipments made by S2, right? And we want that for every supplier. So it's a good thing when you're looking at any query, in fact, SQL query, it's a good idea for you to look at, to imagine 
what kind of output is being asked for. Not the actual details, but the format of the output. So if you look at this, you say, well, output is going to have a table. And this table is going to have one row for every supplier. And the columns are going to be total ship quantity shipped, average quantity shipped. That's what is being asked for. Once you figure that out, writing the query is not going to be all that difficult. Okay, so the output is going to look something like this. We have not filled in the actual numbers. We are just figuring out what the format of the output is going to be. Right, so we want one row per supplier showing the aggregated values. So clearly, we need to do the grouping by the supplier name, right? Because we want only one row for each supplier name. So we need to clearly group by supplier name. So again, our query, once we figure that out, the query is actually quite simple. Select supplier name, sum of quantity, average of quantity, and then we do the join. Suppliers S, join shipments SP on S dot S number equals SP dot S number. And then of course, we need to group by supplier name. That is, you've got aggregates and non-aggregates in your select clause. So clearly, you have to group by the non-aggregates. Okay, so we are saying for every value of supplier name, create one group and then calculate the aggregates for each of those groups. Okay, so this is fairly straightforward. Your turn, same thing. List the part names and the corresponding minimum, maximum and average shipment quantities for the parts. So try this out before you proceed. So the output now is going to look like this. Maximum, minimum, average for every part. So clearly, we know that we need to group by part this time. Once you've figured that out, writing the rest of the query is not difficult. So select the part name, maximum quantity, minimum quantity, average quantity. I should have made max, min and average as uppercase. Doesn't matter. From parts P, join shipments SP on P dot P number equals SP dot P number. So we are joining the parts table with the shipments table on the part number field. Of course, we need to group by the part name. Okay. So when you're writing SQL, always try to visualize what the output is going to look like, not the exact number, exact data on the output, but the overall format of the output and the structure. Once you figure that out, writing the rest of it is not going to be all that difficult. Now we're going to look at a query which is qualitatively quite different from the queries that we have looked at till now. Let's look at the query carefully. List the supplier name, part number, project number, and quantity for every supplier who has made at least one shipment. This we've done before. But where our result now is going to differ is we are saying for suppliers who have not made any shipments, just include the supplier name and leave the other columns blank. Okay. So we are saying, so the result is going to look like S1 and then all the details. S2, uh, not supplier, not the S1 supplier number, but the supplier name, Smith, and part number, project number, quantity. And then Jones, part number, project number, quantity, etc. We are going to have that. Actually speaking, only uh, S1, S2, and S4 will figure in the output because those are the only ones who have made shipments. But what we are saying is, well, for S1, S2, and S4, give all the details. For the remaining two ship suppliers who have actually not made any shipment, just include their name, but leave the rest of the stuff blank. Okay, so that's the kind of query that we are looking at this time. If you remember, in our earlier query when we did this, those two suppliers did not appear because they had no match. And the kind of join we did earlier was called an inner join. And for an inner join, only when there's a match does it appear in the output. But now we are saying, I want it to appear in the output even if there is no match. Okay, that's what we're looking at. So let's take a look at this in a little greater detail. This is the shipments table. Here we have appended the appropriate supplier information by joining on the supplier number field. Okay, that's all very good. 
Okay, select supply name, part number, project number, quantity, and then uh, select for from suppliers is joint shipments, etc. So that is going to give us this result. Smith, P1, Smith, Jones, etc. But unfortunately, here we see that Blake and Adams are missing. Right, that is suppliers S3 and S5. They are missing because they have not made any shipments. And which is what we expect in an inner join. When there are no matches, they don't figure. But our query is explicitly asking us for suppliers who have not made any shipments, show me just the supplier name, leave everything else blank. Okay, that's what the query is asking for. So our earlier approach of inner join doesn't cut it anymore for this. Okay, so what we're really saying is what we would like is to join the matching rows as before, but for the unmatched rows, include the supplier information and leave the rest blank. Okay, so include the supplier information and leave the rest blank. So now when we select the final result, you're going to get, um, you know, Smith, P1, J1, 200, etc. You're going to get all of this. And then when it comes to Blake and Adams, it'll simply just say Blake, Adams, and then the rest of the stuff is going to be blank for them. Okay, so this is what we're looking for. Okay, so we've got this. And the output we want, Blake and Adams, just to appear as is, but for the part number, project number, and quantity for Blake and Adams, of course, they have not made any shipments, so all of that is going to be blank. And in SQL, when something doesn't have a value, it's not just blank, but it's called as a null value. Okay, it's called a null value when there's no value at all available, which is different from blank or zero. Okay, null has a special meaning in SQL, which says the data is not available. We don't know what the data is or it's inapplicable, that kind of a scenario, okay? So inner join will not produce these two rows because S3 and S5 had made no shipments and therefore there's no match, okay? So now we need a different kind of a join to get the matched records and also the unmatched records from one of the pair of tables being joined, okay? That's called as an outer join and there are two types of outer joins. Uh, left join and right join, and we'll see both of those shortly. So you can say A join B on A dot X equals B dot Y, right? That is, we are just, this is like two tables, right? Suppliers and shipments, and we are joining it on the value of particular fields being equal. Till now, of course, this field names have been the same on both the tables, but that need not be the case. This is our good old inner join, okay? Matching only adjoining only the matching rows from A and B. But here there are two other kinds of joins, outer joins. One is called a left join, A left join B on A dot X equals B dot Y. Okay, and then a join matching rows from A and B and also rows from A that have no match in B. Right, we are saying left join, A left join B. Right, so there are two tables A and B here and A is the table on the left-hand side of the join, okay? So we are saying this is a left join. So first join on the match, wherever A dot X equals B dot Y join that. And then for those cases of A that have no matches in B, simply include them as they are. That's called a left join. Similarly, a right join. We'll see both of these as we go forward. I just wanted to show you that these are the two kinds of outer joins that we'll be talking about. One is called left outer join and the other is called right outer join. And for short, they just call left join and right join. You can leave out the word outer from the SQL query. Okay, so these are the outer joins and we'll be looking at examples right now. Okay, so going back to our earlier query, list the supplier name, part number, project number, and quantity for every supplier who's made at least one shipment for suppliers who have not made any shipments, include only the supplier name. And this is what 
we want from this. Okay, so uh, this is the shipments table, this is the suppliers table. This time I'm just showing them in different positions, but it's the same thing S1 joined to S1 and S2 joined to S2 and all of that. So the two tables have been joined on the same supplier number field. Okay, now there are two suppliers who have not made any shipments. So we are saying include them and there are no corresponding matches in the shipments table. Just put blanks. And then from this, select your output. Okay. So this time we are saying select supplier name, part number, project number, quantity from suppliers S. This time we are saying left join shipments SP on S dot S number equals SP dot S number. Right. So we've added one word left. In other words, what we are saying is for suppliers who have not made any shipments, just include the supplier name. Right, that here the, what we are saying is the supplier table is on the left because we are saying join suppliers as two shipments, right? Two tables. We are mentioning suppliers first and shipments later, which means suppliers is our left table. Shipments is the right table, right? Because suppliers is coming first and we go from left to right. And we are saying for rows on the left table that have no match on the right table, simply include them anyway. Which is why Blake and Adams now figure because we said left join. And that is what is producing the rows for Blake and Adams. Of course, they don't have part numbers, project numbers and quantities. So those things are all null. Okay. So it's the left join that is doing the trick for us. And we'll be looking at the left join a little more in detail very shortly.